Hey folks, uh, good day to you, VM Explorer here, and I just wanted to go through uh, a few tips and tricks I wanted to share with you around my recent pass for the VCAP DCV deploy for 2022. <laughs> That's quite a bit, but let's take a look at it real quick here. Uh, this is actually the post that I put up uh, most recently, and uh, I did pass uh, this deploy test. Uh, the deploy test for me uh, was the third test I passed this year. So I had my um, uh, DCV professional uh, for, for seven completed, right? Uh, I took the uh, advanced professional test for design and passed, and then I've taken the deploy test as well. Uh, and passed. Now that I've passed all three of these, uh, that entitles you for what they call the uh, VCIX badge. So complete these three, you get this VCIX, which is an implementation expert badge for data center virtualization. Uh, from there, then it qualifies you to apply for the design expert uh, if you so choose. And there's links here on all of these to uh, kind of go through that. Uh, but if you're looking at it for those links, you know, there's a lot of good information out here. Um, you can go through and it'll explain about the certification and what it means. And keep in mind, we have all types of certifications. This is just data center virtualization. Uh, there's multiple other types based on our products that, that a person could take. I've been focused on uh, this one because it's primarily where I do a lot of my work. Uh, also, there's also the exam guide, which I highly recommend uh, reading from tip to tail and making sure you, you understand all that as well. Okay, so getting down to it. So what is uh, this test all about? So this advanced test is a 205 minute live lab. Uh, it's gonna give you 17 questions in there um, and it costs approximately $450. Uh, the lab uh, is very similar to the way hands-on labs work and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and uh, currently uh, you can take it remote uh, via proctored, right, video proctored, or uh, in person. Again, we'll talk more about that as well. Uh, in speaking with uh, uh, online uh, proctor tips, uh, some things to keep in mind. Uh, the, the process is pretty simple and convenient. You mean you don't have to leave your home, you use your local system, uh, you know, you have a camera going and they watch you take a test and you go through it. Other than that, the, the test experience is exactly the same as going to a remote location. So, if it's convenient for you to take it at home, then do it. If not, then then go on site. And I, I chose the online proctor exam, and, and this might be new for some folks. So you want to make sure that you really get through those technical requirements and, and understand them really well. My technical requirements, if you look at this kind of link right here, you can see that uh, they have some system requirements, uh, test space requirements, et cetera. And they also have a nice white paper that kind of explains it. Take a few minutes to read through this if you're not familiar with online proctoring and uh, give it a go. Now, some of the things that they uh, that I found were interesting was is you know if you're familiar with this, right? Uh, only one monitor is allowed, so make sure if you're using a PC, you'll have one monitor hooked up. That doesn't mean you have to un remove the monitor, right? Like me, I have a dual monitor setup. They're kind of hooked up there, right? So I take this monitor and kind of point it away from the testing facility, then just unplug it. And they'll ask to look at the plugs and make sure they're unplugged. You pick up your camera and you show it to them. It's, it's no big deal. But just have one monitor, right? And a camera and audio video. No headphones. Don't forget that. You need to have an external speaker and a good microphone. So you have all those things. Go through those requirements. Make sure you understand it. Um, keep your desktop very clear. You can't have anything around you. You know, not even your, your tape dispenser here, right? Everything's got to be arm's length away. And that's important. I have a really large desk. Me putting, me removing everything off my desk would take me a long time to remove everything. I have extra computers and all types of stuff. But as long as it's arm's length away from you, uh, you're fine. Now, you may have to bring that point up to the person who's proctoring you that that's the requirement. Then they all usually, the uh, last couple times I've taken it, they haven't given me any trouble with that. So just make sure your desk is clean. You've got your monitor set up figured. If you're using a laptop, great. If you're using a laptop with an external 
external monitor, you have to unplug it and turn it off and it can't be facing you. Um, if you're using a laptop and you want to use the external monitor, then you've got to close your laptop fully. So be prepared for that because sometimes laptops like to go into hibernation. So make sure you can close that laptop up and it's not a big deal. You can still use your full screen monitor. Okay. Uh, another test taking tip is I'd be very familiar with uh, VMware hands-on labs. Uh, this uh, particular environment is very similar to the way hands-on labs work. I would definitely recommend going in, taking some of the labs, uh, getting familiar with them. I took like every lab I could find, right? If there was a lab out there that kind of was related to uh, the topics, I was taking it and going through it and it really helped a lot. It helped me also kind of get you know used to doing uh, things in it like cut and paste and, and all those types of things. All right, um, and speaking of cut and paste, uh, get into the lab and really practice cut, paste, and drag. So like I've got text highlighted here, you can highlight text in the manual and drag it into the lab. But understanding that skill is an art, right? There's also send notes that's there as well. You can click that button and you can drag text or cut text and paste it there and then send it to the lab. Um, you can cut and paste inside the actual lab OS and how that works. So there's a couple different ways that you can, you know, massage text into the lab. The key is, is understanding how to do it and be proficient at it. Just understanding what cut and paste is not enough. It's understanding how to copy, drag, cut, paste, send data into the lab and be proficient at it that is key. And if you're able to master that skill, it will definitely help you on the lab. You'll be less frustrated because you're like, I just controlled C over here, but when I did control V over there, it doesn't work. And I'm trying to highlight this text, but I can't move it. And why is it so? Just practice it. <laughs> Make sure you got it under control. You'll save yourself time and frustration. All right, so the lab environment. When I started the lab, of course, we went through the proctor first, did all those things, ID and camera checks and audio video checks, all that type of stuff, move some stuff around, okay? Then the lab came up, okay? I should say then the exam came up, the welcome screen, uh, and it was a good uh, page of text there. So I took time to read that all the way through and made sure I understood how to scale and all the passwords and, and everything else that I needed to do. Right. I was very, very, very much took some time to get that done. And that was helpful. And it didn't cost it didn't cost me anything to do because it was all the clock hadn't started yet. But then the next screen, the clock did start when you start your exam. OK, you're going to get a window that's going to come just like hands on labs. It's no no trick. Right. It's like hands on labs. You get a window. Your lab starts to build up. Your menu pops up on the right. You can start reading through the, the item now. Uh, the questions that can be where um, some folks get hung up and this is all about tasking yourself right so I call the questions the best way I say to describe them is they're multitasked questions right because they're gonna ask you to do multiple things or they might ask you to do one thing right a question could take a long time a question could be very short Right? So they're going to be all over the place. Some are multiple parts and they're lengthy. Right? Some will have you do something right? and it's going to take a long time to do. So you can't sit there and watch it. You got to move forward else you're going to run out of time. So time management and multitasking uh, is very important here. And you really got to plan and think that out. So if you're doing your... Um, uh, testing on your own or kind of preparing right you might think well let's these are three things I know how to do let's put them together right and see if I can do three or four things at once like deploy this and wait but still go over here and configure that and do this change and go back and forth and get used to you know working that type of way just not one wait two wait three wait right so make sure you kind of practice that skill and, and have that honed in It'll definitely help you be more efficient uh, on this particular uh, exam. Uh, you know, one thing is tasks don't tell you how to do something, right? They ask you to do something. So you're going to have to know how to do it. If you don't know how to do something within vSphere, you're going to be hitting the documents. And speaking of documents, that's one thing they give you on the uh, particular uh, lab that is deployed, the OS, the operating system. There's a folder on there and it has a bunch of different things. There'll be tools, there'll be all types of stuff, KB articles, all types of things that you might need. I'm not saying you need them all. I'm not saying you need all the tools that are deployed. 
By the way, you might want to take a really good look at that screen and be familiar with all the tools that are at your disposal because that's your tool belt. As you're going through questions, you might think, hey, I need to use a tool. What are the tools I have access to, right? What are the files I have access to, right? So don't, I would, before you rush into these questions, I would take time to really get just a little bit familiar with that kind of lab OS and make sure you understand what is there and what do you have at your uh, disposal. Um, I'd also recommend tracking your status of your tickets. So for example here, um, uh, what I did was I came in, opened up Notepad, and then I started one through 17 all the way down. And I tracked the status of each particular um, question. So whether it was complete, I needed to come back to it, I got part one done, whatever it is. That was very helpful because if I got stuck on number two in some way where I was waiting for some process to complete, I need to move forward to the next question, et cetera. But then I might be five questions deep before I come back to question two and then trying to remember all the different tasks, hence multitask, all the different tasks that they gave me. I have to find out where I was, what I did. And sometimes you're thinking, well, I know where I'm at, I got this, but it can get very complex. It's easy to forget and miss something. So track that status. You might, if you're not good at this skill, this is something you might want to practice. You know, practice your note taking and what it means to start something. Where did you end? I ended on step four or I ended doing this. I need to do that next. Just take a minute to get familiar with how to do this. And I think this more than anything can really help you keep track of where you're going. There's no flagging a question like there was in the previous test. That was kind of nice. You could flag questions and at the end you would do a review and you'd say, these are the 10 questions I have to review. It's not there. So you need to come up with something, you might wanna consider coming up with something like this to kinda of help out. All right, study tips. Um, any vSphere concept is fair game. So you gotta prepare for it all, <laughs> right? But <laughs> I will say, uh, hit that exam guide, really go through all the links, be familiar with all the concepts. I'd really recommend looking at all the what's new stuff. So what's new in vSphere? All those concepts, those PDFs, make sure you understand them. Hit YouTube, hit videos, hit the labs. Go through all the what's new stuff and be familiar with what's new in the uh, in vSphere. Now, I'm not saying that it's just what's new stuff, but it's, it's very helpful to make sure you're uh, well aware. Like for example, vMotion you're probably familiar with and we've done that concept for a while, but there's a lot that has happened since vMotion and what's new or what's latest is something you might not be with be as familiar with or haven't evolved your environment into yet, right? So that's what I'm saying, what's new is handy because these are skills that you might not have honed yet, whereas vMotion's been around for a while and you've got that under control. So make sure you kind of review all those things, what's new especially. Try the Odyssey Labs, um, really great because it kind of puts you under a gun as far as uh, a time is concerned. Um, you know, you're gonna be timed to how fast you can do things. They task you, they don't tell you how to do things. So that's another good thing. You have to get it right to progress, okay? Um, and then for me also, lastly, having a home lab was uh, very handy. Uh, I really used my home lab to help hone some of my skills, especially those what's new items that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, and then put those into my lab and practiced and practiced and practiced and then combine two or three of them and try doing them all at the same time and practice that way. And when I got to the exam, uh, I was really ready to kind of in, uh, you know, work with it and I was well prepared, you know. So folks, uh, those are my tips. I, I hope these uh, help you prepare for uh, your exam. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or maybe you've got some great tips of your own that I left out, by all means, uh, please share them up. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.